This week, the leaves are like flowers, but the trees are losing them because it's fall. We're losing our egos if we dare to give them up. It's that time of year astrologically. Look inwardly and see what you need to let go of. Welcome. Hi there, Taurus, and welcome to Your Modern Shaman, Maria Maria and Rainbow Land, here with the weekly astrological forecast for the week that starts at the 22nd and ends at the 20. 9th of 2018, 29th of October 2018, <laughs> here we are in Denmark with the Heartful Weekly Report by the fire. So, well, this will be five minutes, five to ten minutes of um, Taurus only for the ones that want a fast report and we'll end it with cards, tarot cards. And after that, we'll go into the depths of things at another level. So for the ones that want a fast version, this is six in one. If you want to watch the whole program, then you will also see very beautiful nature uh, around where we live, uh, around our house here, in, uh, above our house, because I'm flying with a drone. And the beautiful colors right now in Denmark, since um, the leaves are falling off the trees, so everything is changing. It's another spring, they call it, with the flowers. Another with the leaves being like oh, everything is blossoming again the, because of the leaves looks like flowers um, the colors are so beautiful so this week Taurus it's all about uh, relationships everything has now moved into your seventh house uh, of relationships with others other people and yeah it's really on um, and you are known to be the stable sign of the zodiac the one that we can always count upon etc uh, but with Uranus in your sign, you are definitely being more uh, restless than usual. And uh, for a long time we've been talking more about your health, your diet, getting new, better routines, your work-wise. But now it's really about relationships. And uh, it's all about that, that ju because of Jupiter there and the Sun soon moving into to, uh, to Scorpio. Um, well, actually it is in Scorpio now. <laughs> Because I'm filming this the week prior, of course, the sun is in Scorpio. And um, Mercury is there as well, and uh, your ruler. Uh, so, that is why I'm talking about that so much is going on relationship-wise. Let's look at the, into the flames while I'm talking. Be the element. And actually, let me see if I can show you that the moon is getting up above the trees over there. Maybe it's not the easiest thing to see the smoke but I'm in here in the moonlight dancing in the moonlight <laughs> so uh, well this week Torians um, your planet is of course here in, in Scorpio in the seventh house but you have to know that that it will in November it will go back to to working with relationships in regards to your work and your routines and your uh, your diet, etc., and your planning, uh, and um, then in December we'll be back in your relationship house. So it's like these stories are on for a while because of the, your planet's retrograde. And there's a full moon in your sign with the rainness and the restlessness. Here you're much more outspoken about what you need and, and yeah, what you're in need of instead of instead of perhaps always everyone else. So. If people listen to what you say, well, definitely, if someone that you that you express a need to listen to what you say, it can definitely improve a relationship. But of course, also, if they don't, it can also mean that, wow, it's stopping, because with Uranus, it's sudden change in, in things. And Venus is also in, in conjunction with, with the Sun. And um, this week, and usually when you have Venus in conjunction with the Sun, it's it's shining upon love relationships and creativity, etc. And and Venus and Sun conjunction is all about, you know, passion in your love life and you're thinking about love and affection. And you're getting love and affection from people around you often in this regards. And it's normally a very social aspect here. In Scorpio, it can also be. Uh, deep and transformative and intense, of course, spiritual, and new, new love and friendship. And Venus is money, so you can attract more financial, material goods with, with the sun here. Um, and of course, your planet is actually slightly lazy <laughs> and wants to spend money. But um, but be 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 um, aware of relationships with this aspect here. 
be, be aware in your relationship if, if you're single or in a couple um, the sun close to, to Venus uh, can, can bring romantic feelings up around someone of, that you meet they, they can be increased in this regard definitely and your ex expectations can, can rise to a new level so but um, yeah, and, and we, we also have a lot going on in your ninth house of adventure, traveling, wanting to expand your mind, uh, learn new things. And, and here it's like maybe you've been committing to someone where, where they have, it's been all about their needs uh, and there's been, you know, taking up too much space in your life. And maybe, maybe this can radically change now. We also have your planet, again, Venus in a good aspect to Saturn here, so so maybe you will actually get some stability in a relation in regards to someone <laughs> um, here that that's been draining you, are expecting too much of you, and you are putting some some firm new structures in, or getting help from Saturn. And anyways, and we have to always remember that even though I'm mentioning uh, certain things uh, here for you it's different because if you are 20 years old or if you're 40 years old um, depending on your age you're old uh, if you're 60 you've been through different cycles so sometimes for a youngster some of the things going on for the older people are like not happening in your age and vice versa often when we get older we are wiser we are higher up the mountain and have a better view so we don't fall into the traps as much as when we're younger so some of these things don't apply for you to you of course for that reason but mars is also in a good new position in your in your career house your 10th house of Aquarius, so of course you can also be more outspoken, more uh, assertive, more you know push, pushing forward with with your with your destiny and call your your face in the world, how you appear out there in public. You're more assertive, and um, and say what you feel, say what you mean, um, yeah, and take advantage of this. So uh, yeah, with Uranus, the radical Uranus that makes you restless and wants to shake things up in your sign, your first house of your identity, who you are, in a square uh, to the nodal axis with, with the north node of the moon, which is the point of your destiny in Leo, where it's about your emotional well-being and your, how you feel um, inside, how your inner child is treated and how it can express itself um, in a creative way. And, and the south node is where, where your work life is, your career, your goal, your, 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 your face in the world um, and, and how you interact with people at large. These things can, in this T-square with Uranus in, in, the, in the beginning of your sign, is going to give you a pre-taste of what will happen in your life from the 6th of March 2019. Uh, when, or is it the 7th of March uh, 2019 when... when Dramatic, dramatical changes can happen here, and you're having a pre-taste of it. That you want, there's, there's gonna happen some dramatical changes in your life, um, which are for the better always when it, when it's Uranus, um, and it, because Uranus is gonna stay there till I think it's 2026. Um, yeah, it is. It, it definitely is. So, yeah, you'll have this kind of restlessness because it's there in the beginning of your sign, especially for the Taurians who are born at the end of April, uh, they will feel it the most, um, the second part of April, you'll feel it the most. For the other Taurus, uh, Taurians, it will be more later on. Um, but this restlessness, you want, you can feel that there's something coming, you can feel that there's something building. You're having a sense of that something is going to change and, and, and this will of course still give you a little bit of fear or what is it has it something to do with me with my children with my partner with my work with my home with my uh, situation in, in general uh, it, it, it brings some instability and security in and it will actually um, uh, also meet up again when it's in, in um, when the notes are in because the notes nodal axis change in December November December into into cancer and 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 this will make the situation uh, more about also your communication and and how you and the relationship to your sisters and brothers and just your your everyday environment um 
And we have to remember that even though this feels radical with Uranus here and that something as big is going to change, we have to trust the process because Uranus only goes for where there's tension that needs to be resolved on this path towards um, the enlightenment of realization, uh, reality, whatever you want to call it. We have to trust the process. Either we trust in God or the process or in life or whatever we want to call it, or if we doubt, we have to remember that our hearts have closed. Because when we are in a closed or an open heart position where we allow the universal life force, God, whatever you want to call it, in, we know that it's all like it's supposed to be and then our process becomes much more smooth. So I always advise people to have a meditational practice, have a practice where you don't think about things, but you go into the trust stage instead of and accepting the now just as it is right now instead of battling it. So now we're going to go over to the cards of the week. And remember, don't follow trends, follow your heart. Hi there, Taurus, again. Uh, this is uh, going to be the card of the week for you guys first with the astrology cards and then uh, with the use of the normal standard tarot cards. The astrology card of the week for the Taurus is dip it up. I can feel it's this one. So <coughs> this is actually the Taurus card. The second house, Taurus. There's something and owning it says. You know, Torin, your energy is, is about owning stuff, having, this is mine, what do I own? And it's about your energy being opened up, probably, because we have nothing in your second house, but we have your energy here, and that's, uh, that's the Torian energy, where we have the full moon. So this is definitely you speaking out, saying what it is that you want with your full moon here, you're blossoming. You're opening yourself out, you're going to up, you're going to be more outspoken, and you're allowing this to happen with this. It's in a, it's much in focus this week. And the tarot card of the week for the Taurus. For the Taurus. Whoops, a card turned itself. The temperance card. This is all about balance, seeking good balance. At the same time, as you fulfill your needs, you need to find balance between you and other people. So it's also about these things that you might have been doing too much for other people, where someone has been taking advantage of your needs. What I talked about with Saturn and, and Venus in, in a relationship between your seventh and your ninth, you're now restoring a balance so that you are not taken advantage of, but it's about you finding the balance. And also that will also give some good to the other people that you say no to. Which, if they have been overstepping your boundaries, it's also about boundaries. So you're putting your boundaries in order to restore some balance this week so that you can be more of you, who you are and what you need in your life. Yeah. Of course, you just need to follow your heart, basically, because then you will never go wrong. Instead of trends. See you next week. Be still, quiet your mind. We are now at the collective report. We're traveling through with nature. And the first message here is, be still and quiet your mind and your life. This is more important than anything else that I say in any report. Be so still that you can touch your heart and hear your heart beat. Tick, tick, tick. Without this, all of these reports that I do or that you hear are so very unimportant because if you're never still, if you never quiet your mind and hear, the heart speak, then the ego is running the train and you'll be driving around in circles. 
If you want to get off the train and come to another level, time is up now to find your way into silence and stillness and believe in that you dare let go of your ego and hear and listen to the needs of your higher self. Do you dare to become a servant for something bigger than the ego? Something as a part of you already know the road to, towards or are success and control and all your learned programming is more important to you? Have you even discovered who you are or what your calling is? Can you feel this consciously? Oh, there are too much clutter and dirt. If there is too much clutter and dirt, you know what step one will be now. To try to don't identify yourself with the noisy voices inside a certain place which is overruling anything good anyways. It's not giving you any joy and it's overruling anything inside of you. And this part of you cannot forgive. This part of you will just hold on in order to get drama. Get you in the front seat. Get you in the front of everything you do. You are the loving, forgiving you. Someone who doesn't hold on. Someone who says no to negative manipulation, violence and power. Who whenever confronted just leaves without a fight, quietly and peacefully if it's not right for you to be there. And if we cannot say no and stay in this peaceful, quiet, ego state where the ego is quiet and you just hear the voice of your heart when you speak you hear that you're soft in your voice you hear that there's nothing inside of you that judges the other person you feel your heart you feel that you can speak without wanting something from someone else then your ego is away and if someone's overstepping your boundaries you just say no peacefully with the same voice and you walk away if you start fighting, you will know that it's no longer you. It's your ego that has started to take over again. My brother, Jacob, he's a math professor. And I love him so dearly. We have had a, some sort of reunion. Not that we were in a, at a phase where we never saw each other, but... Uh, we reconnected in our hearts in such a beautiful way. And I remember well, two days ago, three days ago, prior to this reading, and I remember that he would always have in his wallet when I was 16 a note that said, no, when he was 16, I was eight, a note that said, treat others like you want to be treated yourself. And he was 16, and he was actually the popular guy in school. And, and isn't it cool that the popular guy is a role model instead of just someone looking good? I love my brother for this. He always tried as the best he could. I mean, we all have ours. But um, as my parents also always tried to treat others kindly. And this is this kind part of our hearts that I'm talking about. I just want to say that anyone who has a lot in Scorpio and um, certain things in their horoscope that are being hit, the crisis are worse for you guys right now. Um, so all fear can be triggered from outside of you to the max. And you have to remember that the ones who are triggering it are not the responsible ones for you having this inside of you. So try not to go into the victim role where you let your old fears take you down to that lower part of yourself where you cannot control anything because you're just in affection, thinking you're now being hit or being the victim, being someone who 
as a victim for someone else. No, no, no. Someone else is trying to show you something. It's that, like that for all of us. Old fear are triggered from the outside to the max these days. So, Venus is definitely in a crisis week right now. She's squaring the stuff that went up on up there in Aquarius. Um, I won't go too deep in, within, uh, into all of this. So, the Venus, Uranus opposition and all this also from last week. Um, going into this week, you can expect a sudden turn of events of something. The moon will go through Aries, Taurus and Gemini. So the moon will start off trying to start new stuff up with energy and a lot of, yeah, let's do this, oomph and fire and um, maybe also selfishness, but it will square the things up there in the 10th house. So there will be some confrontations with authority figures or, and some letting go during the first part of the week. Moves into Taurus, crosses over. Uranus and is in opposition to all the things in Scorpio. And this means that we will definitely feel tense and increased tension around the things we are working with right now as, as we move into the middle part of the week. And um, as we were uh, Wednesday, as it means Uranus, a sudden shift change of events can happen again. Then at the weekend, next week, it will be in Gemini, communicating, talking, being out and about, King Kong sing, the things in Scorpio, weird, awkward things can come up as well, situations, uh, but the energy will be a, a little lighter than it was middle week, but definitely an intense week still as we are now, really in Scorpio. So uh, with the sun as well. So the, there's different change of directions um, with Venus in this Venus retrograde phase that I've mentioned many times, which is 40 days and nights until the 15th of November. And then out of the actual whole cycle in, at the 18th of December. So it's a long cycle, but there will be shifts for you around the 31st of October when Venus is in Libra again, where she's at home, more light air energy instead of Scorpio. So a shift on the 31st of October. A shift again on the 16th of November, or 15th, 16th, depending on where you are, when she's at the bottom of her bow tie in her retrograde phase, um, you will now feel that you are able to move forward with a new light and new glasses up on and all the, all the ex very, very deep and hardest issues in your relationships might, it might be possible to let go of here, but only if you really feel them, so it also feels the hardest. So, um, at the 2nd of December, she'll be back into Scorpio again in opposition to Uranus. So a lot can happen here too. There's a turning point that does it so that the things that you thought were like they were aren't like that at all. And we are going through over the critical zone again here and see what the future can bring for us after all of this. What have we learned? How can we do this even better when we're in relationships? Can we re do re redecide some of the things that we decided for early on and that we maybe discovered weren't the right things for us, but we learned from. For the Scorpios themselves, relationship situations shift constantly now, new people in and out constantly. So there's a full moon this week, as I said, so it's going to be a very intense week. We mean in opposition to Uranus, something really strong, some really strong intensity comes in and the notes are squaring Uranus, as we talked about. Um, that is really intense in this grand cross. So money and intensity and sexuality are the things that's going on in Scorpio. So other people's money, your money, what do we do with money? money we share with other people, um, sexually reshaping, redoing, reformulating things in regards to these things. With Venus retrograde here and Jupiter, Mercury is here, Sun is here. So it's all about relationships on a deep level. Also, 
the relationship to ourselves. So all water signs are endings and um, the first six signs in the zodiac are personal signs. And they are all about me, I am, I have, I think, I feel, etc. And the next six are the impersonal um, signs. And we have entered a month ago the impersonal signs, where it's about us and the other people in different levels. So usually something new starts in Aries, and Aries is the unconscious energy, sign number one. And the actions through Taurus and Gemini and Cancers are are unconscious about what it's doing. Um, and it ends this unconscious doing and moving about, etc. Is, is ending in Cancer, um, in the water sign of Cancer, the fourth sign. So we go through fire, earth, air, water. So we start with the fire and Aries, we go into the earth energy, calm down, feeling can be heavy in Taurus. Then we go to the air energy, talk about lightness, skirting over the surface in, in Gemini. And then a little bit heavy with water, it's always heavy because it seeks towards the ground, right? And dies with, is flushed away with the water and cancer. That was the unconscious energy and actions. And then, We'll have a self-conscious uh, period with Leo, where it starts again with fire, and then ideas, and going into Vir uh, Virgo, where it's uh, earth energy grounding them, manifesting, materializing the ideas. There. And then the self-consciousness moves into uh, Libra uh, and develops in regards to relationships, and then into water again. Libra was also air talk, you know, being about in a lighter thing, and then going um, into Scorpio into water signs where we are now killing the self-consciousness because we are now in the transpersonal signs and uh, the transpersonal cycle when it starts in, in, in Sagittarius but we have to kill it first in Scorpio it's a cycle and this is how we how we learn and grow on a spiritual and personal level through the zodiac um, so everything, Jupiter, Sun, Venus and Mercury are in the Scorpio, so it's the death of our self-consciousness and it's really spiritual, mega spiritual, a really mega big spiritual opportunity to ascend, of course. Ascension time, spiritual people, light workers, let go of your ego now and your hurt and your wounds and your blaming others. It's your past you're letting go of. Don't kill the messengers, please. All of our challenges here as spiritual uh, as, uh, beings are often our ego. That often are more here in the self-conscious and unconscious part of the first six times, times. But now we have the chance to really move. So even though we have a higher self and even though we have souls in this whole story and we are... Um, beings, souls and bodies here that usually are just infinite beings in contact with everything, with God or whatever, and then we are also incarnated in this body, in this incarnation, life after life. And in this body we have an ego that loves drama, and this ego is making the big show, which does that we are ifing around in our minds. And we cannot find this, this moderation and relaxations because desires, wants, and I want more and bigger, new and better, drama, attention. It's the ego. So that it doesn't have to be removed. It'll just be more and more noisy as you try to get silence. So when you start meditating, trying to get into your silence, I talked about in the beginning, you have to know that the ego will be louder. Don't be fooled by it. Stop being the victim of your ego, of other people feeling like it. See that you create your reality. Okay, There's a reason why people do to wash you what they do. Find out why. It's because you're not in your heart. Always is because you're not in your trust position of the heart. Yeah, well, it's because Peter was also always a jerk, so of course I cannot trust him. No, I don't know. But if you really cannot trust Peter, why are you with three Peter? Did you give him a chance of being trusted with all of your heart and love? 
What did you actually contribute with? Did you dare to walk away from him and treat yourself with that love and respect that you want from others? Because that's what you have to do if you want love and respect. Well, so physically and emotional drama is, is what the ego wants and pleasure. So the, the brain that won't stop thinking is Mercury, rational thoughts. But in Scorpio, Mercury cannot be rational. He will feel the intensity. Usually he wants to say that, oh, if I do this and this, then that and that happens. But here you don't have, he doesn't have control. From, but he can see with his heart and his feelings if he dares to. So try to, to use him to investigate, be the detective, as I said last week. So, well, the ego comes up in Leo, and then we have to go to Virgo to get the control of the whole thing. So, Re Venus is reviewing our connections also to the body. Venus and, and actually um, Venus is, is the earthly love but we also have a more spiritual love with Neptune and Neptune is the higher octave of Venus so when Venus goes direct you will be coming into a beautiful sign with Neptune um, well it will still be a while and Jupiter is going through Scorpio and he will um, Come to Grand Trine with Chiron. So there will be beautiful, higher spiritual love waiting for us after this ascension process. Don't hold your breath, but know deep inside your heart that everything will be solved and healed if you dare to let go of your need to control. In Scorpio, we're dealing with issues like loss, betrayal, abandonment, neglect, and abuse, forces beyond our controls from our partners, ourselves, and our impulses, instincts, and a power th through merging with other people and uniting on a deep level. This is connection. The deepest connections is in Scorpio with sexual drive, sexual power, and force. And yeah, you know, society is ruled by this these days, uh, this force, because it's beyond, it's, it's like the stimulus, like alcohol, drugs, and sex has become a drug, and it's just be uh, so accepted, because everyone does it, then it's okay, it's like, also, okay, but if, also like in Denmark, people drink a lot, and it's like, well, everyone does it, so it's, that's normal, and thereby accepted, yeah, but when you, if you drink, when you drink, you are take if you work on your spiritual self and you whenever you drink you have to know that that takes you because spirituality when you clear yourself spiritually and meditate you get into higher levels higher realms and every time you drink you take yourself all the way down and again you have to start all over and the same thing with sexual um, stimulants wanting more 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 you're just feeding the ego right so um, well. We have to open ourselves for, in Scorpio for the positive sides of Scorpio, and that has something to do with, with trust, so that we can heal these wounds uh, and love and trust again. So we can open ourselves up for deeper forms of intimacy, connections to others, and the whole intention is to experience this beautiful, sacred sexuality where we connect with our soulmates, our twin flames, on a spiritual level, not just to get stimuli and not just to... But we also have to know that, of course, we take away some of our spirituality if we just use the sexual intercourse to get an... I I'm, I'm just want to be honest here. Um, I don't remember the English word now. When we, when we get release, you know, males or females. Um, our spirituality also drops. Uh, so if this is what we want, and we do this after two minutes just to get the release, yeah, well, boom, the energy goes out. We have to know that. But if we use this thing we have with each other to go deeper, deeper, deeper within, then it's something else. We can experience this beautiful, sacred sexuality. And yeah, I mean, the society stimulus, stimulus has something to do with something new and exciting with all this tinder and stuff. But sacred union is about real, lasting stimuli for the soul that we can use in the long run as a soul being, even when we're not here. 
It's when we can reach deeper in, when we are together with our partner instead. But how do we do it? Well, exploring spirituality between us and, and reach new and fresh layers in, in, inside of ourselves instead of always seeking outwards, 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 as the whole of society is trying to make us. Like this new times relationships, spiritual relationship will be that we be we will stay together and more twin flames in, will incarnate at the same time to 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 uh, raise and r- rise up the the vibrational level here um, on the planet, and it's our responsibility to go deeper in as conscious light workers instead of f- fearing into new relationships unless it's uh, supposed to happen, of course. But uh, when we know we found the right person, then use the hard times and st- to, to instead take responsibility for ourselves, help each other through the hard times. You know, help each other when, when, when the ego comes out. Instead of just always saying, okay, you're not good enough. Uh, I don't want you, you have too many errors. Then help the soul, goddammit, instead. Of just escaping and putting more fear into the person, try to help, and you'll get it back. We get what we give. It's the whole deal. Yeah. So um, soon enough, we'll have sat Jupiter and Saturn and expand our consciousness, have fun, explore life on another level. So where do you get your physical and emotional pleasure from? Last thing today, it was a long report, is that if we really want to love, we have to get let go of the hurt ego and forgive. The more you feed your ego, the more hurt you will get. The more you feed your ego, the louder it shouts. And um, when it wants this and that in, in, in uh, you know supermarket and you just give it to it it will just shout louder and that's why it's good to meditate and find soul peace and find out what you actually came here to do on a soul level what is your purpose if you can't pinpoint it mentally then go into your heart and feel every day when you walk around am i doing something that makes my heart happy can just be that you start smiling to other people and spreading love and joy just like that. It's a simple thing. We don't all have to become like this big, great thing. It's just a society that says that. Find your path. Maybe your sole purpose is just to put smiles into this world. Don't follow trends, follow your heart. See you next week. Thank you. Namaste. Don't follow trends, follow your heart.